Hello everyone, Goldie here with another video, this time reviewing the Plus Ultra cards from the promo pack in the My Hero Academia collectible card game. In this video, I'll go over each card, give you my analysis, tell you whether or not I'll play it, and that's about it. If you have not already liked the video, be sure to do that, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and let's get into it. So starting with Crow and Frog Takedown, this attack is really good in my opinion. It can be played in any deck because it's on the infinity symbols, which is cool. It's actually kind of nice that they're doing that with the promos. They just got to be really careful not to make these cards too good. But uh, this card doesn't count towards progressive difficulty when you play it. So it's a 5 diff, but it helps out aggro decks because uh, it's almost like it discards itself. Like, you know, if you Asui it or if you Bakugo it out of the card pool and you play it, which is really nice. Its bottom ability also makes it so that you can ready any card in your staging area that hasn't been readied. So you can ready uh, Tokugami or Asui if they're committed by their ability or something else. If there's other Asuis or Tokuyamis that get printed in DLC or something, maybe they have an e commit ability and this card will go really good with them. It's also alley and range, so it goes in a lot of decks. I'd play this inside Tokuyami or Asui probably. It's good. I like it. Double Front Beatdown is the weird card inside the uh, DLC pack, in my opinion. It is a one check and it is like a hand action card thing, sort of. So it's got like, you know, just normal stats for its difficulty, like a four high for six. And its enhance is that from your hand, you can play it to return a t an attack to its printed speed and damage, which is like really cool and like really weird at the same time, because like when you're playing this, it's, it's strange because it's a one check and typically with one check cards you got to like sort of build your deck around them or they have to have like some really super hot ability to like justify putting them in or just be statted incredibly well and this card is a five difficulty and it's a one check it just has normal stats its block is a plus three which isn't very good it's fury punch and range so it has good keywords but that enhance is like i don't think good enough to really justify playing this inside your deck because it compromises your build turn when you start if you don't have it in your hand you didn't draw all copies of this in your deck and it compromises every single turn that you're going to be playing when this card is inside your deck like every time you risk checking it its bottom ability is bakugo and midoriya enhanced specific discard the top two cards of your deck build all foundations discard this way face up that's cool i don't know if it's really worth playing still because you could whiff with that if you do play it, you're gonna get at least one foundation more than likely from that or uh, if you get two it's like even better so the free build is really nice you can play it in any bakugo and midoriya so you can play it in the two we have right now or if they uh print more in the future you could play it in those so that's cool i just think this card is like maybe a little underpowered like i'd have to play it in bakugo and midoriya first to be sure but i like for sure would not play it in anybody just for the top hand enhance ability i just don't think it's good enough and i think they need to tread on like tread very lightly with uh, the way they make enhance abilities like this if they're on foundations or attacks because this is how an action should uh interact with cards not an attack but that's just my opinion anyways Respro Acceleration Kick. Uh, this is just a normal statted kick with uh, below average block. It's got a real cool ability though. Its ability is you may remove kick attacks from your card pool in addition to discarding momentum to pay for this ability's EX ability. So you can clear your card pool if you're playing this as like your second, third, or fourth attack or whatever, and then keep attacking if you have more attacks inside your hand. And its combo enhance allows you to discard a random card from your opponent's hand, and then they draw a card. So you kind of do uh, Ida's, uh, the DLC Ida's ability on them. Um, this card's solid. I think that this would end up just being a one or two of inside uh, a kick attack deck because you wouldn't want to draw two many of these inside your hand i mean i guess it does discard itself if you play another one in front of it which is pretty cool but it's a five difficulty attack and it's like six damage and you have to check a six every time you do that so that's not that great but being able to clear more than one card from your card pool if it is really good um it also has the same symbols as a uh, dlc Ida, so that, that's also neat i think that character just needs all the help he can get I don't think he's too bad, but like he's definitely not that great. Gutter Punk Elbow. It's a five difficulty attack with normal stats and a good block. It is a Fury Slam combo ability attack, and it can recycle cards in your card pool. Its combo enhance is combo weapon, discard a momentum, add the first card from your card pool to your hand, and its other ability is you cancel the next non-character ability your rival plays this in hand step. The bottom ability, I think it's really cool because it rewards you for paying a lot of attention to the order that enhances are being played in. And and you can sort of outplay your opponent with it. Though that is matchup dependent. It depends on who you're playing against and what the situation is, but that's a cool ability. You're really going to be playing it for the enhance ability. And uh, just one thing to note, this card doesn't combo into itself. It's Fury and Slam, and it's probably for the best. That way you can't just play this gutter punk elbow then another one and as long as you have momentum you can play him forever you could uh like uh, definitely uh recycle eraser heads 
other attacks with us and i think that's really cool because this might give the uh weapon build for a racer head that last little push that it needs to make it uh more optimal than just playing void kicks the racer head which is awesome and it also does help just uh weapon builds in general in any of these symbols so that's really nice i like this card a lot i think it's cool it's not like a super amazing card but um i would definitely be happy to pull it as a promo Pillar Swing, a slightly understated 6 difficulty card with a 3 check and an average block. It is a charge slam weapon attack with stun 2, which is very good. And it enhances R. If this attack is completely blocked, you can add it to your momentum. And its bottom enhances if this attack's damage cannot be reduced below printed, which is also very good. So it is a 3-speed uh, attack and it's 8 damage. And it also makes it to where um, if you do not block it, you are going to take 8 damage essentially. And and it also basically says that you're going to get a momentum for it. If your opponent completely blocks it, it clears itself from the card pool, goes to your momentum, which is great. It actually goes really well with uh, Ochako 2 dot. And it's uh, if it's half blocked, then your opponent takes four and it'll go to momentum at the end of the turn, which is good. So it's really cool. It's sort of like an anti damage reduction card sort of and sort of like a tempo card but it's big enough to where you could finish someone with it if you played it at the end of an attack string granted it's kind of fat so playing it like as your third or fourth attack would be kind of difficult to do unless it's like really late in the game or something like that but this card's really cool i think it's a solid opener because it stuns too it can force a block well it'll more than likely force the block out of your opponent's hand and it'll give you a momentum if they block it and if they don't block it well you just dealt eight damage and that's great the action card for the plus ultra pack is plus ultra. It's a two difficulty action with a plus five block and a five check. It has a static, which is when attempting to block with this card, you reduce the attack speed to zero. So you'd be blocking on a five plus whatever your progressive difficulty is. So that's really cool if you're blocking against really fast attacks. So like Recipro Burst or if you're playing Eda Tune, and you make your opponent's attacks faster, you can use this to just block on a five or a six or a seven, whatever the number of blocks you have inside your card pool is. And it's bottom enhances. First enhance for My Hero Academia only. Discard one momentum, double your attacks, speed or damage. That's a really good enhance. I think this card's gonna play a really pivotal role in like throw decks or decks like that. Or um, also your sideboard if we come up against a lot of decks that have huge uh, speed buff attacks, kind of like Rest Pro Burst and so on, because this would be your answer to them. And it's really cool that you can just double any attack speed or damage with this, because uh, the My Hero Academia format definitely has more underpowered attacks. So actions like this will just give you that little extra oomph mid and late game to be able to do that extra damage. And with throws, it's especially good. So if you're using like um, the Midoriya or Sero throw, you can make them 10 or 12 damage base and throw them at your opponent and deal a whole bunch of damage with them, which I think is really cool. Um, I give this an A plus for an action card. I love it. The only foundation promo is a three difficulty five check with a plus one block called In the Typhoon. It's enhances E or move, discard two cards. This attack is considered completely blocked during the block step. So you basically take no damage from an attack by blowing this up and discarding two cards. I think this card's cool. Um, I think it would be a really good side deck card or maybe a main board card and like Shigaraki or someone that can like really utilize completely blocking an attack. But um, it's a matchup dependent card. Like against a deck using Recipro Burst or something like that, I would absolutely side this card in to give them another barrier to have to go through to hit me with a finisher. But um, its cost, discarding two cards and removing itself, is really steep. And you're only going to likely use it in a desperate situation. Or if there's a character that just ends up having a bunch of cards in their hand that you could use this with. But I think it's a really well designed card. I think it's cool. It really fits niches. I'd be happy to pull this. For the first character, we have All Might. He is the same All Might that was a Gen Con promo a few years ago. He's just 630, enhance, uh, commit a foundation on him, draw two cards, bottom enhances. Your Fury or Punch gets plus one speed or damage for each card in your rival's hand, playable committed. I think he's fine. He's an okay aggro deck. I don't think he has the same flavor the other All Mights have, and um, I just think he's okay. He's like, you know, a B plus character. You could probably make a good deck with him. I just haven't personally tried. He's just not my cup of tea, but he's a good character. Mashira Ojiro. He is a six-hander with 29 health, and he has two pretty interesting abilities. His top ability is flip one foundation. Your attack gets plus three damage, and if it's blocked, your rival, your rival flips a foundation. And his bottom ability is once per game, this attack speed 
cannot be reduced, and it gets plus one speed for each of your rival's face-down foundations. This ability cannot be canceled. So, the first thing I see here is that on Earth, we actually have a card that will go with that All Might Punch, where if they block it, they flip a foundation. So, he'll help you flip your opponent's entire staging area. I think if you play that with this... It'll make it nine damage if they block, they'll have to flip two, and you also have cards like Apathetic and stuff in your deck, they, that'll go with this, so you just make your opponent's entire staging area face down. He's like a good anti-control character, but also on fire, he gets the ability to give you his attack plus one speed for each of his opponent's face down foundations, and make it to where the attack speed can't get reduced, so you can make like a super ultra mega recipro burst with him on fire, so that's really cool. There's like a lot of deck building possibilities with this guy. And with all that, on top of that, he still gets the plus three damage on all of his attacks whenever he flips whenever he flips a foundation. So he's just like a really solid aggro character, I think, and has a lot of possibilities. So that's like perfect for a promo character. So I think he's great. I'm definitely going to be building decks with him. Mezzo Shoji, another 629 health. He is... His first ability is form once per turn. Add one attack or foundation from your discard pile to your hand. Lose health equal to its printed difficulty. This is really cool because you can add a zero difficulty attack or foundation to your hand for free. So he's kind of like a seven hand size character when you think about it. And um, he can tutor attacks to his hand. So you can play a deck with very few attacks. You can play a deck with maybe eight attacks with this guy or less. As long as you just have the pieces to create stuff. I could see him going really well with Relentless Barrage and a couple other punches. And you just play like Gale Force Punch and then four Relentless Barrage in front of it because you added a Relentless Barrage to your hand at this form. It would be so easy to do that maybe that wouldn't kill anybody but it would be it's an idea for a deck i'll try it out his bottom ability is just e commit the stack gets plus two damage your next stack gets plus two damage just a very simple damage buff this guy could be so many things because he gets that tutor ability and i think that's cool he could be a control deck he could be an aggro deck he could be anything but when we have a lot more foundations inside the game, I think he's going to be a premier control deck, in my opinion, because he can just get whatever piece he needs. It's good that he doesn't get assets or actions, because, like, this guy would probably be a giant pain in the neck if it was for that. But he's still going to be a really good character, in my opinion. Could you imagine? He would get evil gaze for free every turn. Mina Ashido. She has a 7 hand with 20 health. She has two abilities. Her bottom ability is just your attack gets plus one speed. If it deals damage, you gain a health. It's just a generic ability. Makes all of her attacks slightly better and gives her some survivability. But her top ability is a response. It's once per turn during your turn, you can discard a card. After you check a card, you may play it as your next form this turn with no control check necessary. So you will have a card that does not have progressive difficulty and doesn't even need you to check the top card of your deck, which is amazing. So... That is an awesome ability. A lot of people are like kind of lukewarm on it, but like just uh, from your first turn, you really got to think. If you play lots of high difficulty foundations, you could like, you know, play a three, a two, and a one. And if you check a foundation on your third card, you could just form it and you don't have to check for it and you could keep going or just stop. So she uh, just cheats the system effectively. She doesn't get to stack her deck or anything, and to my knowledge, there are no cards on her symbols that do stack her deck, so she can't really take advantage of her ability yet, but she can get a really good solid 5 or even 6 build in her first turn, because the last uh, card that she plays could get a foundation and get a really uh, easy pass, or pot shot her opponent on uh, her first turn going second if she checks an attack, and she can afford to play a lot of high difficulty attacks because she can get them in there for free. The only bad part is it's, you know, like uh, playing in a casino with her. You can't really control what's going on. But I think that'll change as we get more sets, more promos, and more DLCs out. I'm excited to play her. I'm just not sure if she's going to be good yet. And of course, I saved the most interesting for last, Mount Lady. She is a six-hander with 29 health, the running theme of all the new DLC characters. Her top enhance is Enhance Commit. Add one copy of Mount Lady from your discard pile to your staging area face up. Only if you could not do that, you may add one card from your discard pile to your momentum. You may choose the card that you add to your momentum from your discard pile. And her bottom ability is discard a momentum. Your attack gets plus two damage for each Mount Lady character in your stage. Playable committed. So when you start the game, you can get plus two damage by discarding a momentum. And if you were to get all your Mount Ladies in your staging area, you can get plus eight damage, which is a lot of damage. But her top ability has bad wording. I don't like the wording of it. What do I mean by that? So her top ability is if you could not, you may add one card from your discard pile to your momentum. I really wish it said or you may add one card from your discard pile to your momentum because this kind of like chokes her a little bit. If you're playing Mount Ladies in your deck and you check one or get one inside your discard pile when you would rather have a momentum, you'd have no choice 
but to put a Mount Lady from your discard pile into your staging area, and you can't get that free momentum. Her top ability, E commit to get a momentum, is really, really good. It's even better because you can choose the momentum. So you can get static abilities like Electric Jolt. Uh, it doesn't share symbols with her, but if it did, she could get that. When and if we get more cards with resource symbols that are on hers that have static abilities like that that work in your momentum, she'll be able to just get them on demand, which is great. But if you're playing other Mount Ladies inside your deck, that'll gum up the works, which sucks. Because if you could choose one or the other, I think she would be so good. Like, being able to just uh, get another Mount Lady inside your staging area and making it to where every momentum is worth 4 damage or 6 damage or 8 damage, I think is great. Especially if you're playing throws or something, because the throws will also turn into momentum. Even right now, if you play Void with her... Uh, with throws and tape swing and just her, you can make some really big fat throws just on like your second or fourth turn and you can just grind your opponent out, maybe play one attack a turn, use her and just pass and build and then just turtle up and you're just gonna be making bigger and bigger throws as the game goes on. But her options for like control decks and stuff like that are limited because you have to put the Mount Ladies into your staging area when you get them inside your discard pile, which I think sucks so much. Because being able to get a momentum whenever you want opens up so many deck building possibilities. Like any card that just says E discard one momentum. She can just say, all right, I'll commit my character. Now I got it in an instant. It's also a shame you can't off symbol cards in the My Hero Academia format. Because you could totally just put Electric Jolt in your momentum with her and do that even if it's off symbol inside standard, which I think is really cool. She might have some cool standard builds, but for the My Hero Academia format, I'm very unsure about her because of that wording. I'll be playing around with her a bit to see like what's possible and what's not. Not being able to play character cards from your hand, the My Hero Academia format, and also the wording of that top ability really cripples her character. Anyways, that is the full review of the Plus Ultra Pack promos, the first series of them anyways. Be sure to like the video if you have not already. Subscribe if you have not already. I'm really excited for these promo packs. I'm hoping that I can get a locals going in my area so I can get some for myself. And thank you very much for watching. I'll be seeing you all next time. Done.